Time for ACCA's SPL June 2024 Pre-Scene Information Analysis. This is Zainab Marjan and I help you pass ACCA's SPL exam. In this exam, we have PetVet Services Industry and a regional PetVet Clinics organization, which we are going to call shortly PVS. The timing of this case could be better for me because we have been to the vet four times this week. Luckily, she is doing much better now. She's feeling much better now, and she's going to recover soon. We are given some important things right from the beginning. One, market structure is changing. There are multinational companies that are acquiring clinics. And the three largest players in this market are multinational groups and they control more than half of the market. Our organization is the fifth largest vet clinics group, vet, vet clinics organization in Ireland, and it only has 6% market share. And when I say only, I don't mean that's a very small market share in comparison. In comparison, it seems small because the first three players have the 52% of the market and the fifth only has 6%. And in the following parts of the case, we learn, for example, the first group, the largest market share, the one with the largest market share, also sells pet food, their own pet food. They manufacture pet food, they sell it in their stores, and the stores are actually, sorry, the clinics, the clinics are actually a way of um, horizontal, horizontal diversification for them. They are integrating forward. Another thing that we learned from the first part of the case study is that pet owners have growing expectations. They expect lower cost. They expect longer service hours. They expect payment plans. So again, this is telling us competition is high. We already started understanding this from the first part when they told us that 52% of the market is controlled by three large groups. And there is a lot of emphasis in this case study about the competition, about competitive advantage, and especially price competition. We know that customers are price sensitive they benchmark consultation fees. All this emphasis on competition and competitive advantage makes you think of one man when you are studying for SBL. You should have thought of Porter by now. So not just fire forces, but also Porter's generic strategies, you know, cost competition, cost leadership, differentiation, these you should know, and also you should know about the value chain. Of course, regardless of the case study, you should study the whole syllabus, but here understanding the value chain helps you understand competitive advantage further. Once you create how the value, once you understand how the value is created, um, you are going to understand what actually creates the edge, and that edge is basically your competitive advantage against your competitors. So we are in a highly competitive market, in a fast growing market, a lot of margin to be shared here. You need to think about that, how PBS, how our organization in the exam is going to survive in this market and how it's going to get more margin here. And the margin is basically value. This is why I reminded you to study value chain once more. So what else? Technology. There are technological advancements and some of them can help clinics bring consultations costs lower. However, they are going to require investment and they also increase competition. We are again reminded that clients are not loyal, and since they are price sensitive, that's 
expected actually. Um, what else? There is a staff shortage. Veterinarians are in high demand. Their working conditions are not the best. So attracting talent is a problem, but retention is an even bigger problem. This made me think of talent management because we know that vet clinics are not going to survive without vets. They are key employees. You need them. And in this shortage, to keep employee retention at an acceptable level, you need to think of something. And we mentioned Porter. In terms of fire forces, maybe the suppliers that supply you goods don't have that much power. Maybe they have moderate power. But labor, in this case, I think has moderate to high power, for example. They have bargaining power. So anything about managing that, anything about managing your qualified key employees can be a question, I think, and is a huge challenge in this case. There is also a mention of large carbon footprint of the industry and possible negative publicity that can come from that. So that's a big risk. There's also information about industry bodies and, and, and the union. There are a lot of things, a lot of regulations that vet clinics should satisfy. So each of them, in the case of non-compliance, is a risk. And in the case of compliance, is a cost.